Florida and uh, kind of moved around my whole life, so around the southeast. I really started learning to play guitar when I was around 10. My father used to play, you know, in a band, and my grandfather and my uncle, everyone. So we used to always just kind of sit around and jam and I would always make them let me play along even though I didn't know what I was doing. My father is a songwriter, my grandfather is a songwriter. It's kind of in the family. Uh, lucky to come from a musical background. When I was growing up, I was always trying to uh, get little bands started. Even like back in like when I was 10 or 12, I would recruit all those little kids in the neighborhood and we formed a band called Black Diamond. <laughs> and we're writing little songs on these toy pianos and stuff. Um, I was always, you know, playing trying to get people around me into music so I would have someone to play with, you know, and then as I got older, I, you know, I started meeting people in high school and, and jamming around with different people. Some of my earlier influences were <laughs> um, Willie Nelson. When I was a little kid, I found a record um, at this house that we moved into, and uh, I just used to try to play along with it, Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain. And, uh, Melissa Etheridge, of course, when I got a little older. The thing about her is that, <clears throat> I mean, she had the Yes I Am album out, and I mean, I was probably about 13 or 14 when that came out, and I sat and I learned that whole record. It really influenced my playing a lot. I mean, I know a lot of girl musicians are influenced by Melissa Etheridge, but then you dig deeper into her material from, from similar features to her self-titled record. Amazing. I mean, she's just a great writer. I realized probably around 22, 23 that I didn't know how to play the blues. So there's a program back home, Blues Sunday, and uh, <clears throat> I had to work every Sunday at this dog kennel and I would just put it on the blues station every Sunday I would record it. So I decided I was going to learn the blues. One of my favorite songs is uh, Meeting of the Minds, um, which I wrote for my father. Um, we probably weren't on the greatest terms because I left home to, to do music at 17 and you know he didn't want me to do that and uh, kind of weren't we kind of lost our, our bond there for a little bit and he emailed me one day and was like you know I'm sorry you know and I couldn't even respond so I just went home and wrote that song and it really basically built a bridge between me and my father and and uh, so I'm real proud of that song it means a lot to me it just goes to show music, it, it heals, you know. I have two previous release albums, uh, Remember Me and Laundry. <laughs> I was developing, so. I did uh, Runner Surrender in Atlanta at Brighter Shade Studios with a producer named John Hopkins. Me and John just kind of sat down and I, I've, I played him a whole bunch of different songs and he was like, he had a vision for this record. He, there's no percussion on it. And it's, it's upright, fiddle playing, pedal still, and dobro, and then me on the guitar. So I think he wanted to keep it, it that grounded and rootsy so I could go out on the road and support the record. And I'm really proud of it. It's the best thing I think I've done so far. I just hope that it just keeps going.